out of the eight factors of the path. When the Buddha chose one to be identified as your refuge, he chose mindfulness. We have to remember that mindfulness means remembering, keeping something in mind, and particularly keeping in mind what you need to be doing right now. You establish the mind right here with the breath, right here with the body, with your feelings and your mind here in the present moment. You've got it at the right place, with the right frame of reference. Try to put aside thoughts about the world, and then just look at what's coming up in the mind. Is it skillful? Is it not? You can tell if it's coming from greed, aversion, and delusion that it's not skillful. Of course, greed and aversion are easy to see. Delusion is not so easy to see. That's when you're not sure. You put something to the test. See what the results might be. And if they come out well, okay, then you know this is something good. If they don't come out well, you've, you've learned something about one area of your delusion. You've cleaned away a little bit of delusion and replaced it with knowledge. But the important thing is as you look at your thoughts, not in terms of what you like or what will get you ahead in the world, but simply as whether, whether they're skillful or not, whether they lead to long-term welfare and happiness or not. Now, if you can keep those issues in mind, then you're protected. Because the long term is what we should be going for. That, the Buddha said, is a sign of wisdom. When you ask yourself, when you ask those who know, what will be for my long term welfare and happiness when I do it? Realizing that your actions are the ones that make the difference. And so you want to look at them in that frame. You try to keep that frame with you as you go through the day. That will be your guide, and that will be your refuge. So stock your awareness, stock your knowledge with right view, and then learn how to maintain it, carry it with you. Otherwise, it's like a library in your house where none of the books are opened. They're there, the knowledge is there in the books. But if you don't open the books when you need them, then they don't do you much good. You want to have your knowledge at your fingertips. That's what mindfulness does, and that's why it's your protection. So as you go through the day, don't think about what you would like to do or what you don't like to do. Think about what would be skillful to do, what would not be skillful to do. And remember the Buddha's categorical teaching. It's one of only two teachings that he said are categorical, in other words, true across the board in all situations, is that whatever is skillful should be developed, whatever is unskillful should be abandoned. You're thinking in the right terms. You're looking at things in the right terms. And that's half the battle right there. Because the mind can so easily disguise things. Say, well, I need to do this in order to get that and that and this. And pull you away from the question of what's skillful and what's not. Mindfulness, when it's right mindfulness, it keeps pulling you back to your place of safety. <laughs>